Coming in at number 5, SCP-1958. SCP-1958 is a Volkswagen Type 2 Samba bus, often referred to as a micro bus, which is currently located a set amount of kilometers away from the Earth's Sun, in a region of interplanetary space near the orbit of Mars. Now, prior to the establishment of Foundation Monitoring, SCP-1958 had begun moving away from the Sun at a constant velocity of approximately 130 kilometers per hour. Aside from a few minor bumps and scrapes, 1958 does not appear to have received any significant damage. It's also worth noting that the phrases Starmobile and Alpha Centauri or Bust have been spray painted in English on the side panels of SCP-1958, with analysis indicating that 1958's trajectory prior to Foundation contact would have placed it in the vicinity of the star Alpha Centauri A in approximately 37.2 million years. I should also mention that SCP-1958 has undergone heavy mechanical modification, with the interior cabin and engine compartment having been made airtight, with a small section near the rear doors being converted into an airlock. The original glass windows have been replaced with a shatterproof acrylic, and the exterior surfaces have been treated with an unknown chemical additive, rendering them nearly impervious to penetration by space debris. Now, the gas tank has been replaced with a fuel cell, which was reported to have not been developed until several decades after the date at which 1958 is presumed to have left Earth. Very fishy indeed. The means by which SCP-1958 left the Earth's surface is currently unknown, and an examination of police reports and newspaper archives indicates that several bright lights and sonic booms were reported by residents of San Francisco on the evening of July 4th, sometime in the 50s, during Independence Day fireworks. Since a redacted day, SCP-1958 has been placed in a stable orbit of Earth's Sun, and it's not currently visible from Earth by the naked eye. Don't look, you'll go blind. Coming in at number 4, SCP-1959. 1959 is an unmarked white spacesuit, similar in make to Soviet's SK-1 model used in Vostok program with a few minor alterations. The suit itself appears to be indestructible, not too shabby. The helmet's visor is badly damaged and misted over, preventing any observation of its interior, so it is unconfirmed who is inside, or if it is even a person. So far, all attempts to communicate with 1959 have failed, with the subject also being known to emit considerable amounts of gamma rays. Radiation. As of right now, 1959 appears to orbit around the Earth at a reasonably constant speed, with the subject's position varying between low to high Earth orbit at any given moment. 1959 will ram through any obstacle it encounters, causing grave structural damage. Now, although the subject is capable of independent movement, it does remain motionless most of the time. On the occasion the subject does move, its body language shows signs of extreme distress, and it will sometimes make attempts to break its visor. Maybe it's George Clooney from Gravity floating away. There are some recorded instances where SCP-1959 has hovered in place for a certain period of time before moving off again. According to observations made to such events, the subject appears to be resisting some unseen force before being pulled away. As of the time of this recording, 1959 is yet to be contained. Coming in at number 3, SCP-4420. 4420 is a red Idaho potato with a current mass of 400 million kg and external dimensions of 150 meters by 65 meters by 55 meters. 4420 displays the following properties. 4420 recuperates moisture shrinkage by generating a random amount of solid potato matter. During this event, a random Idaho citizen's drinking water transforms into a starch-rich potato-flavored water, granting the ability to commune with potatoes for 3 to 10 hours upon consumption. Number 2. Exposure to visible EM radiation produces potato matter of a randomized form. The new matter relates to potatoes at various conceptual levels, be that immediate or vague. Number 3. 4420 displays an innate immunity to decay. And number 4. 4420 consumes food and organic waste within a 2 meter wide area. Any organic matter entering this area transforms into a potato tuber of equal mass, which teleports into 4420. At the time of this recording, 4420 has been growing for approximately 22 years. As of right now, 4420 is currently contained 150 meters from Site 82 in a localized artificial pocket dimension housed in tentative containment module 819. Therefore, it's still space. Coming in at 2, SCP-2399. 
2399 is a massive complex mechanical structure currently located in Jupiter's lower atmosphere. Since its visual discovery in 1963, 2399 has been observed to use highly advanced antimatter based weaponry to create special disruptions observable as a large red vortex, commonly known as the Great Red Spot. SCP-2399 appears to be damaged, perhaps due to an impact with the moon before coming to rest in its current position. It has also been observed releasing a multitude of small octopoid repair drones in efforts to repair the damage it has taken. Some of these drones will remain near 2399 while others will patrol nearby moons or deeper into the gases of Jupiter itself, in search of parts that 2399 is missing. Despite being damaged, it seems to possess limitless power supply, advanced electromagnetic shielding, matter disrupting weaponry, the ability to repair damage done to itself and a precise tracking and targeting system. Due to its location and nature physical means of containment are currently impossible. Implanted foundation agents in major observatories are to contain footage or images of 2399. An ongoing misinformation campaign is in effect, which has thus far been able to completely suppress the knowledge pertaining to 2399 from public awareness. Foundation satellites in orbit around Jupiter are to maintain constant vigilance of 2399's reconstruction efforts and make all attempts to hinder that process should 2399 reach a minimum of 75% completion. In the event of surpassing 75% or an information breach in the jamming perimeter, necessary foundation personnel will engage with 2399. And finally coming in at number 1, SCP-3003. 3003 is an Earth-sized planet orbiting HIP 56948, a G-type main sequence star located 208 light years from Earth. Several anomalies of note are located on 3003 and have been given appropriate subdesignations. SCP-3003-1 is a beetle-like organism that is native to 3003 that parasitizes humans when infected by SCP-3003-2. 3003-2 is an amoeba-like microorganism that infects humans and SCP-3003-1, affecting the behavior of both. 3003-3 is a technologically advanced civilization on 3003, composed of SCP-3003's entire native population of 30 billion humans, all are parasitized by SCP-3003-1. SCP-3003-4 is a device that enables the creation of a traversable portal between 3003 and Earth. 3003 is 3% heavier than Earth and has a rotational period of 30 hours and orbits HIP 56948 at a distance of 0.9 AU. 3003 has a biosphere that is biochemically compatible with that of Earth, though no known organisms other than humans are native to both planets. Almost all biological processes found on Earth are also found on 3003. Genetic analysis of life from SCP-3003 suggests that presence of a single ancestor roughly 3.1 billion years ago with subsequent life evolving naturally. This is suspected but not confirmed to be the result of some anomalous property of 3003 itself. The risk of introducing invasive species from one environment to the other is addressed by current containment procedures. This has thus far been averted by microorganism. The presence of invasive microorganisms has not been discovered. Count it. Kicking off the list at number 5, we have SCP-2399. SCP-2399 is an extremely massive Keter class structure located inside Jupiter's lower atmosphere. So it's not the easiest place to get to, let's say that. Ever since it was discovered in 1963, SCP-2399 has been seen using these highly advanced antimatter weaponry that is more commonly referred to as the Great Red Spot. So many believe this SCP is damaged, perhaps after the impact of one of its biggest moons. So SCP-2399 responds by releasing multiple drones to go and repair said damage. Some of the drones don't linger though. A good amount is actually sent to patrol other nearby moons. There's like 79 moons, so it stays fairly busy. Other drones will actually dive deeper into the gases of Jupiter and search for parts that this SCP is missing. We estimate that SCP-2399 is 59% complete. Even that being the case, it's still terrifying. Even whilst damaged, it possesses a limitless power supply, advanced electromagnetic shielding, matter disrupting weaponry, and very accurate tracking and targeting systems. Foundation satellites are constantly keeping an eye on Jupiter as they orbit because the main goal here is to keep the reconstruction process below 75% because after that, we're 
pretty much doomed. And coming in at number four, we have SCP-1959. Next we have what most would think of as an ordinary spacesuit, even by the photo. This Euclid-class SCP doesn't seem haunting at all. It appears to match the Soviet's SK-1 model suit, however, the visor seems to be damaged. So it's impossible to get a glimpse of what lies behind the cold reflection of space. It also emits a considerable amount of gamma radiation. It is in the near reaches of our atmosphere, so it's constantly orbiting Earth, like a common satellite. But here's the kicker. It's been known to come closer in orbit, and then all of a sudden it goes further away at like any given moment. SCP-1959 is also indestructible. So if anything is floating in its way, either a meteor or an Elon Musk space car, it's not gonna last. Hence why it hasn't been contained by the foundation yet, but they're ready for the day to arrive. Should it be captured, there is a special containment unit set aside. The foundation actually once witnessed SCP-1959 trying to break its own visor. Terrifying. So whatever's going on under that helmet doesn't look too comfortable. Maybe it's got a really bad itch on its forehead and it's just like, God, come on, it's been so long. The subject has also been said to be resisting some unseen force before being pulled away. So add that in, that's terrifying. And coming in at number three, we have SCP-1694. Making its home just next door on the surface of Venus, SCP-1694 are the residual remains of an extraterrestrial nanotechnological device that was deployed on its surface. What deployed it? And when? Well, we still don't know. But what we do know is that if we were to make our way to Venus and land on the surface of the planet, SCP-1694 will rapidly shred us and quickly reassemble the matter at a cellular level into an interconnected mass of various durable appendages and sophisticated organs. Through unknown means, cells from multiple sources can be made to function together, and even dead tissue or matter can be reconstructed and repaired. Wow. So it makes sense why SCP-1694 is a Euclid class. Now, the fact that SCP-1694 targets biological tissue makes us believe that Venus was once like Earth, but due to an advanced civilization, it became this nanotechnological war due to the aggressive methods in which SCP-1694 uses to extract the resources. There's no traces of life left on Venus. This dude cleans up. Many have drawn conclusions that this is why Venus is a hot, lifeless planet, because of these greenhouse gases that accumulated, killing any organic matter and boiling off any traces of water. And honestly, with the way Apple's going now, I can for sure see this happening by the time we hit iPhone 16, easily for sure, maybe 15. The face scan alone, I'm not here for it. I've seen Black Mirror. And coming in at number two, we have SCP-3485. We go now far away from Earth, I'm talking like 17 light years away. This Keter class SCP has quite an interesting look to it. One that resembles, well, yeah, a lobster. And it's a big lobster too, bigger than the sun. Yeah, let's get into it. SCP-3485 was discovered back in 1999 by an astronomer, but of course, when he showed the world his brand new proud discovery, everybody thought this guy was nuts. Until the SCP Foundation discovered it two years later. God, that has to suck. That's a pretty loaded I told you so, I think, coming from his direction. SCP-3485 can withstand quite a lot of damage. This thing is massive, so it's for sure bumped into the odd star or two, but there's no burn marks. There aren't any dents in this thing either, so no moon has given it a charley horse or anything like that yet. Come lunchtime, ooh, you better watch your back, ET. SCP-3485 has a complex digestive system, mainly snacking on leftover hydrogen and helium residue created by stars. It also uses heat-resistant tendons in its mouth to chop away at star material. I bet it loves Hugh Jackman. <laughs> you know, the, the star material? Okay, yeah, oh, yeah. So when you eat a lot, usually a few hours go by, and then that waste has to go somewhere, right? So when it comes to a galactic lobster, where's the litter box? What's step two? Well, it uses its nuclear reaction to process material. We're talking mass energy conversion with zero waste. Teach us your ways, please, we need it. It's capable of surviving in space because it doesn't need nutrients or oxygen or anything lame like that. Instead of a bloodstream, SCP-3485 uses a highly conductive gaseous solution to transport electrical energy. But what if it's hungry and it's light years away from the closest pit stop of a star? Well, it can instantly teleport there and begin fueling up. So in other words, we're screwed. And lastly on our list, we have one of my favorite SCPs from space. I'm talking about SCP-4524. This cuter class SCP is about the same size of our moon, except, well, it's made of human cells instead of our moon, which is made of cheese. 
right? It's made of cheese? Cool. We're unsure whether or not this SCP is alive, sentient, or sapient, but it's currently orbiting Uranus. And yes, you heard me. The moon, made out of human cells, is orbiting Uranus. Foundation probes were launched into the atmosphere and they gave us some data in regards to SCP-4524. That data being that its surface is actually habitable. How can it support life? Well, that's still one of the mysteries of the Foundation. Many have drawn conclusions that SCP-4524 has maintained the surface ecology using a thermoregulation system. Now, instead of the Foundation sending humans there, they decided to send a rover because, of course, it was much more safe. Not only was the surface made of human skin cells, but the structure of it is made of like muscles and bone marrow. God, it's gross. And if that didn't make you feel sick enough, maybe this next one will. The liquid resting on SCP-5424 is sweat and urine. So if you were thinking of grabbing a floaty and going for a ride down the old interstellar lazy river, you might want to take a nose plug with you. Coming in number five, we've got SCP-2662. This SCP makes its way out of containment pretty regularly. Thing is, it doesn't really want to. It would be perfectly happy to stay under Foundation custody until the end time, spending most days lazing about and eating on someone else's dime. Unfortunately, that'll never be the case for this strange, stretched out humanoid. 2662 is a four meter tall, tentacled individual who tends to wield some sort of psychic influence over the people that spend a lot of time near it. Lots of folks seem to become attuned to its wants and needs over time and feel compelled to act in ways that will please the creature. That's just the beginning though. If it were just a vaguely eldritch being who wanted to play video games and get the daily newspaper, the foundation would probably label it Euclid. Hell, maybe even safe. These days, that's not an option though, much to 2662's chagrin. The secondary anomalous effect is the spontaneous generation of religious followings around once a month. 2662 does not choose to make these zealots appear, they just sort of do. So once a month, out of the blue, a group of crazy religious lunatics will attempt to break 2662 out of whatever foundation site currently houses it. The weirdos then perform all sorts of nasty, violent, and sexual rituals that usually center our cephalopod pal. One such example was a group known as Towards Him, spelled H-Y-M-N, blasting into the containment cell, cutting their hands, pleasuring themselves, and then drawing symbols on the walls with a mixture of blood and other fluids. 2662 was horrified when this was happening, but the group seemed quite pleased with themselves. This sort of thing happens often, usually with them taking 2662 out of containment when all is said and done. And no matter how many times the Foundation eliminates these groups, they come back in a different capacity with all prior knowledge of Foundation strategies intact. The poor anomaly just wants some peace and quiet. Coming in at number four, we've got SCP-2006. As long as everyone follows the rules, we should be okay. Well, at least for a little bit. It really is only a matter of time until this SCP decides it's time to try something new. On a good day, SCP-2006 is an anomalous sphere that just floats around its containment cell. The one and only goal of this anomaly is to scare as many people as possible. Sounds pretty bad now, doesn't it? Add in the ability to shapeshift without any known limits, and you can probably see the impending apocalypse on the horizon. Thankfully, this being is gullible and doesn't really understand what people find scary. You can't read their reactions too well either. Most of the time, it'll try and jump out from around corners to shock new doctors and researchers. It also likes to take the form of Roman from the 50s sci-fi goof fest robot monster. It looks like a gorilla suit with a diving helmet bolted to the top. Not exactly the image of terror. Here's the thing though, the Foundation keeps 2006 on a steady diet of cheese unscary fiction in order to keep its curiosity sated. They bring in actors to pretend to be scared when 2006 transforms into rubber suit monsters for the hundredth time. This way they can keep it satisfied, thinking that it has successfully terrified some humans. Definitely don't want it getting any bright ideas. Because the day it realizes that causing damage to the Foundation site would cause terror, it's game over. If someone brings in a movie that's a little too real life spooky, we're all doomed. Hell, if it catches on that the folks it's been scaring are simply acting, it might attempt to do something more drastic. And with unlimited shape-shifting potential, it could break free and cause problems with minimal effort. For now, it's quite friendly with folks it's already scared, and the Foundation would really like to keep it that way. Coming in at number three, we've got SCP-035. In order to keep this porcelain mask contained, the Foundation keeps it in a sealed glass case no less than 10 centimeters thick. The case is then placed in a room made of steel, iron, and lead. Doors are triple locked, and at least two armed guards are posted outside of the metal cube at all times. Nobody's allowed in or out under any circumstances. Then, every two weeks, it has to be moved to a new sealed case and the old one must be disposed of. It seems as though this should be enough to contain anything, but it still isn't enough. There are slip-ups and 035 has made it out on multiple occasions. It's constantly
constantly dripping corrosive fluid from its eyes and mouth, which will decay pretty much anything it comes into contact with. Glass seems to last the longest without totally falling apart, thus the thick glass case. Anyone who comes within a few meters of the mask will feel compelled to put it on. Doing so fries the brain, replaces their personality with that of the mask. The host body will then decay until it is no longer functional. When possessing a body, O35's personality shines through. It claims to have been present at many momentous occasions throughout history and loves to convince people to become its servants. It uses this ability to rally support and attempt to escape Foundation custody. Multiple escape attempts have led researchers to permanently seal the mask away, but this only served to make it angry. An aura of negativity surrounds the mask now, compelling anyone who enters the space around it to attempt suicide. All of the walls surrounding O35 secrete a strange black substance too, consisting of blood and unknown contaminants. The goop is highly corrosive, like the stuff coming out of the mask, and threatens the structural integrity of any room it's kept in. With both the negativity aura and the ability to summon secretions, it's only a matter of time before the mask makes another great escape. Coming to number two, we've got SCP-096. There's no stopping this one. There's no stopping this one. If someone sees an image of its face in any capacity, no matter how far away they are, 096 will track them down and kill them. The pale, lanky humanoid will cross oceans, plains, and mountains to unhinge its terrifying maw and tear folks to pieces. It's been clocked running at 35 kilometers per hour and has been known to accelerate to much faster speeds. In fact, the top recorded speed has been redacted, so we probably don't want to know how fast it can actually go. The Foundation has attempted to contain it to prevent these violent activities from continuing, but to no avail. If it's compelled to find the person who witnessed its visage, it'll make its way to them no matter what. And in the process of doing so, more people are likely to see it and become targets. The only way to prevent this from happening is to terminate it, and that has also proven to be quite difficult. The thing has withstood anti-tank rounds, taken hundreds of 50 cal rounds to every part of its body, and kept trucking. You could tear all the flesh away from its bones, and it would continue killing. So... Yeah, this thing is gonna escape, and it'll escape again. Thankfully, it seems to become docile after eliminating everyone who's seen it. This has provided the Foundation with ample opportunity to retrieve and safely place it back in containment where no one else can witness it. One of these days, though, there's gonna be a chain reaction of witnesses, and we're all done for. And finally, at number one, we've got SCP-2845. So go ahead and read the containment procedures for this godly deer. Just go and see how complex and ridiculous it gets. There are morality plays performed featuring six masked figures. People are forced to drink half liters of olive oil before breaking boulders with hammers. Children are to be roasted and eaten, and more, all on a constant 63 hour and 54 minute cycle. A lot of ritualistic nonsense has been outsourced at this point, but it must be done by the numbers all the time with no mistakes or variations. Now that the ritual has been set, it must be performed exactly so for the rest of time. If this can be kept up, 2845 will remain contained. If not, the godlike creature will escape and transmute matter to its heart's content. This will be catastrophic for everyone involved. Really, there shouldn't be any way for the Foundation to contain this powerful entity. Any cage they could build would be immediately turned into metallic hydrogen and helium, and the beast would run free as if nothing had been there in the first place. But by divining this insane ritual and performing it forever, the deer remains in one place. One slip up though, and it all falls apart. Let's see how long they can keep it up. Ready to face any of these entities down in the street? Maybe bump into them as you pump gas? Or maybe catch a quick glimpse in the background of an unboxing video? I'm sure that would spell doom for you, but wouldn't it be interesting?